the media and the television in particular play a powerful role in perpetuating myths and stereotypes about physical attractiveness. It tends to present a narrow image of femininity, focusing on visual appearance and indeed emphasizing appearance above other qualities. Organizations, especially broadcasting institutions, often promote idealized images of women in a glamorous version of attractiveness. For example, BBC journalists once said they want people with cute faces and cute bottoms and nothing else in between their ears. They are more concerned about the shape of your leg than the professional ability. I had a long chat with Trevor Mbija, a very fast rising and TV Kenya news anchor, on how the audiences out there place their standards and perceptions about how they want to see presenters look or TV host. Welcome Trevor, thank you for making time for this interview. Just to begin with, how do you think the audience out there, especially broadcast audience, regard how a TV presenter, especially for ladies, should look or articulate their words when they're presenting news or they're hosting a show? And basically, weigh that and how their skills, their professionalism in the way in which they present news or the host a show. All right. Well, Dickens, the narrative is quickly changing. There was a time when people used to believe aesthetics is all that matters vis a vis content and intellect. But that is quickly changing into more of the intellect and content over and above how one person looks or even sounds. However, that it's still there. Most of the time, even if we want to get through the interview levels, there's a level of articulation that you need to have. There's a certain look that you need to have as well. But most of the time, people will focus a lot more on the content. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, this has majorly been placed on ladies. I think in a great deal of Team light skin. Yeah, ladies, <laughs> team light skin, team yeah. figure eight and all yes. that. But do you think there are also broadcast journalists who, who are basically males who also experience, you know, discrimination mm -hmm. and they, they don't have a phone. There's been a lot of complaints about television stations picking ladies who are slightly lighter, who have light skin more than the darker version of the women. And the same applies to the men. They, they prefer the pretty boys, the Mark Masai's of this world and not the people <laughs> like myself. I remember there's a time I was told that I have a face for radio. That happens for, <laughs> <It's already laughs> yes, <laughs> essentially they're telling you, nobody you sees you. You shouldn't be on the screen. Yeah, you, the okay. People should just hear your voice. Okay. But at the end of the day, really, it's about the kind of drive that you have, what pushes you, and how much you know. Can you hold an intelligent conversation with an interviewee, perhaps, and get the questions that everybody's wondering about? And that has got nothing to do with how much English you can articulate and how well you are it has everything to do with how much in touch you are with the common mona inchi can you represent their views can you ask the questions that they want to ask can you hold the power to account having said that though it's something that applies to both sides both men and women will be judged based on certain characteristics and those characteristics vary in as much as some media houses may go more for the light skin version, it's just like every other man. If a man wants to look for a, a, some, a lady, there's those who like the darker skin versions, there are those who like the lighter skin versions. The same yeah. thing applies to men. There are those who like the darker, the darker guys, the lighter skin, the taller guys, the bigger guys, the skinny guys. It, it all depends on preference. But I can assure you, the audience will always tell you what their preference is, even if you don't match it. And sometimes in the most brutal of ways, you'll find it online. They will just tweet you, tell you they don't think they like how you look. Your eyes are not that good. They will tell you <laughs> that and you have to learn to deal with it and absorb it as a human being and still hold a straight face when you're presenting the news because you need to know what brought you there to begin with. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So basically, I wanted to ask you this, but I yes. think you've answered it. So, mm -hmm. like, have you in a way uh, experienced uh, some this, level of like, discrimination say you, you you're mm -hmm. basically presenting news and yeah. there are those episodes in which you take a short break and you go on to, to your phone and looking online yeah. and seeing what people are saying mm -hmm. have there been like cases where people have uh, directed this to you several i can assure you even last weekend on sunday when i was on air somebody said that they don't think i deserve to be on air okay. these are things that you will see and they, sometimes they don't give you reasons. Sometimes it's because they don't like how you look. They don't like how you sound. They don't like your last name. As Kai Kai told us that social media has allowed even the lowest of human beings to reach you directly. Yeah. Sometimes they have no reason to hate you, 
but they will put it out there. The, you will never get it right with what we call KOT, Kenyans on Twitter. Yeah. They will support you sometimes, sometimes they will not. And the same people who hate you, they love you the next day. It, at the end of the day, it's just about holding focus and knowing why you're there. Because this, like the sailors always say, no wind favors he who has no direction. Pick a side, pick a direction and decide that you're going for it. Come rain or shine, but people will still talk about it. They will still criticize you, they will still abuse you, they will tell you what they think all the time. But there's also the flip side. Yes. There are those who will overly love you. Yeah. In fact, they will love you and insist that they want you to send their numbers and yeah. all that. So it's upon you to realize and remember what brought you yeah. to where you are. I've had my female friends asking me to, to of course, just do what you say. <laughs> it does that it's never reached you. Yeah. <laughs> I always know they're joking. But yeah. then anytime I meet them again, it's like, did you ask Trevor to give you his number? So, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that aside now, mm. what, what what are you able to tell to tell uh, people who are looking forward to to becoming broadcast journalists, yeah. be they female or males, yeah. what they need to focus on to, to better their their, their, their their profession that is someday when they get onto the screen or yeah. maybe uh, their voices on radio. Find a reason why you want to be a journalist. That's the first part because it's not an easy calling like people say. You're not going to make easy money. Forget about the glam. If I ask yourself, why do you want to do this? Because at the end of the day, like I mentioned earlier on, no wind favors you has no direction. Decide that this is the reason why I want to do it. And I hope and pray to God it is not because of the glamour and the money. By the way, there's no money in journalism, just to make that clear. But people... people Sorry? <laughs> I mean, there's not that much money, believe people, me. People, people know, in yeah, quotes, people, how, yeah. how much, how much Janet Mbugwe used to earn people how much think they know how what much she earns. Kageni earns, <laughs> how much then, jeff especially and think they know how much they earn the <laughs> truth may be very far from <laughs> what they think they earn but oh. still at the end of the day it's just like any other profession there isn't that much money you wouldn't get it as at a go especially if you try and toe the line and do the right thing but uh, back to your question you just need to find the reason why you're doing it that's the most important thing because I hear people tell me that they want to be the voice of the voiceless. Remember, there's a reason those people are voiceless to begin with. It's yeah. because somebody's trying to make sure they don't speak. The question is, are you going to speak over and above that person? Even when you know they're much more powerful than you are, are you going to be able to, are you able to stand the pressure from them? Are you able to hold power to account? Are you able to represent the voice of Wenjiku even when they're most disadvantaged? Because and what I stand by is that at the end of the day, it was never about seeing through one another. It was always about seeing one another through. Yeah. There's a very big difference. Sure. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's very profound. Yeah. Now, thank you for your time. Uh, I, I, I wish we had more time. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> Unfortunately yeah. we have to, uh, to wrap it at that. But, All right. So, uh, thank you, uh, listeners. Uh, that was Trevor Mbija, uh, our, uh, our guest today. And... Uh, Trevor Mbija, thank you so much for, I know you've inspired uh, a great deal of a number of uh, people who are looking forward to becoming broadcast journalists. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks so much, Trevor. Asante. <laughs>